merchandising, merchandising. Go to teespring.com and make sure you get you a good t-shirt. It's where the real money's made on YouTube. Not on the AdSense or all the Patreons. We need you to go and buy a shirt. That way we're no longer poor. Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm Manny. I'm Terrence. And here are the goods. And it's been a while. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it has been. It definitely has been. It's been a while. A lot's happened. Uh, yes. Yes, it has. <laughs> we missed out a lot I, I of I feel time. like a whole month's gone by. It, it? Yeah, it actually has been a whole month. <laughs> hey, well, we hope you liked our top five that we put out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so, hey, Super Bowl set. Yes. The Super Bowl is set. Uh, I don't know how I want to feel about this one because um, I don't know if I want to see Brady win another Super Bowl. Okay, him getting seven would be legendary. I'm, it's already legendary. But I don't it, know if I want him to see. I'd rather see uh, Mahomie <laughs> get a get another uh, get a ring. I'd rather him have two than him have seven. I and you know what? Honestly, uh, I I understand. Mm -hmm. I I the, the reason why I like it so much is that. Brady left New England, and now he proved himself to team. Belichick, mm -hmm. to the entire freaking New England right. Patriots score, uh, organization that it, I was not the problem. Right. I don't. They. Who said he was a problem? Well, because they were the problem already, was their damn defense. That was the problem. <laughs> well, that too, and the fact that they wouldn't get him any help. Yeah. So Belichick, one of the best coaches. Well, they didn't get him help, and then that dude decided he was going to f up, and then that, he had exactly. help from the team. So, but but Belichick, one of the best coaches of all time, right? Right. Mm -hmm. One of the worst GMs of all time. Wor everybody <laughs> that's been un well, he one he tricks everybody. that's like, hey, you should come play for me for like half price. But also too, he doesn't draft well at all. Is everybody's free agent? Yeah. Everybody that's going to. He had DK Metcalf. Yeah. He had AJ Brown. Mm -hmm. He had all of these freaking that could have. He had Randy. <laughs> yeah, but he, had, but he could have drafted them and kept Brady. But mm -hmm. you know what? Good for Brady. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. Yeah. Uh, who you got? Uh, I, I'm a homie. You got my homie? I got my homie. I got my homie too. <laughs> but it would be cool if Brady. No, nope, no, no, no. It would be. Cool. It was cool when Peyton won a ring on another team because I was like, okay, cool. This franchise quarterback won a ring, went to another team, won another guy. I already seen this one. I already seen this movie. I don't need to see it again. Let Mahomie win another. But what I like about it too is that he, it, the, the Bucks are the first team to host a uh, Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. That's cool. You gotta yeah. admit that. Nah, it's okay. Wasted. <laughs> <laughs> Wasted. Well, you know what? The game is obviously gonna be the 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 number one thing yeah. going on. Yeah, definitely. The box office will not be <laughs> because nobody's going to the movie theater. Because nobody's going to the movie theater. So let's get started with the box office and the marksman gross. Uh, two Wait, million dollars, hey, number one again. Who's in the marksman? Because trust me, I have no idea what's in the movie theaters right now. Qui Gon. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's Liam right. Liam Neeson. This so was a movie. Taken. The marksman <laughs> taken four, that's, whatever it is. <laughs> sure. <laughs> whatever we're calling it. Total gross six million dollars already. Two two million dollars for number one. <laughs> So no. easy to get number one. It is it. easy to get number one. I mean, one. if you can get five people together to go see your movie, you're probably gonna make number one. All right, how about this? So the Crudes has been out since November. It's still in the top five. It's number two. <laughs> one point. I'm sorry. Uh, one point seven million dollars. People still. People still trying to figure out what yeah. to do with their kids for the pandemic. 40, 41 million. Uh, 40, 41 million uh, to date. Hey, actually, I, I think the last time we did a podcast. You talk about <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last it was, it was still the last time we did a podcast. It was still in the top five. And what's funny is that this actually went to uh, on demand uh, or v, uh, VOD. That's probably where it's making the majority of its money. Is yeah, the, uh, the but I'm saying that it's it's already on VOD and it's still making money in the theaters. Yes. Number three is Wonder Woman eighty four. We we talked about that. <laughs> That's sad. Uh, hey, my daughter just went to go see it this weekend, so yeah, uh, one point six million. It's grossed thirty seven million. The Crudes has grossed more than Wonder Woman eighty four. Hey, look, the reviews are not really good on this film, and you've seen our review. The reviews aren't really good on Wonder Woman eighty four, but that film should be making more. Than I, the I, tried, I tried to defend the it. The Crudes a month later. <laughs> I tried to defend it. It should be making more than. Carlo would let me, you know, a month later. All right. Number four was Monster Hunter. Monster? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 825,000, 10 million so far. It's just the fact that Mila Djidjidovich is in this film and it makes everybody think that it's she's gonna ruin it like Resident Evil. 
So she that, not, you thought she ruined Resident Evil? Well, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Was Paul Anderson or is it Paul Anderson? Which one is it? Paul W. S. Anderson? One of the two. Her one husband. Of the, one of those Andersons. Ruined Resident Evil, but she was in it, so she, by, 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 uh... Afterlife was good. You didn't like it Afterlife? was not. Afterlife was great. I only like one good Resident Evil, just like there's only one good Transformers. There's one good Resident I Evil. I like Dark the Moon. Nope. All right. <laughs> Uh, and number five was News of the World, 784,000. With Tom right? Hanks. With well, that was Let Me In. Let me, let him go. No, but Tom Hanks is, go, Tom yeah. Hanks is playing the postman. <laughs> yeah, <he's> playing the... <laughs> that's very good. Ah, well great. played, sir. Ah, that's great. No Lorenz Tate in this one. Oh. <laughs> oh. All right, so, all right, not too bad. Okay, you, you get some, you know, you still have some solid holdovers from the holidays and it's still holding strong. Right. Because... Guess what? Things are still having, you know, some time, like, as far as getting delayed again. Right. Like, studios are not making up their mind on whether or not they're going to, you know, release stuff because of the way the pandemic is Yeah, going. and Tenet. Screw the pandemic. Tenet. If Tenet had done really well, or if Wonder Woman had done really well, okay, we'd be talking about wait a minute. all the things that are getting ready to come out right now. Then shouldn't Warner Brothers have released Wonder Woman before Tenet? Why? Because that would have been a well, Nolan pole, was pushing for, but it would have been be a tentpole movie. You can't expect a uh, you can't expect a Nolan film. No, you to, can expect to, a Nolan film. No, you can't expect a Nolan film to get you out of a pandemic. No <laughs> way in hell. You don't want to see a Nolan film. If it's the, if it's not a, the Batman trilogy or the Dark Knight trilogy, then no. <laughs> so you didn't want to see Inception. Let me get this. Okay, you let, didn't let, let, me, let me clarify my comment. Like, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I did. I was like, okay, the minute look. they were out there, it was like it's, it just said directed by yes. Nolan, written yes. by Nolan. Yes. I don't care what. It, yeah, give me it, it, give me it, Star Wars it, it directed it, it, by it, it Nolan. Could, it could be him sitting here drinking coffee. <laughs> Damn, that's so intriguing. Look at that. Look at that. IMAX ratio going know, right? from in and out. <laughs> I'm gonna go see a Nolan film, and I feel like okay. everybody was gonna see a Nolan film. I wanted to see a Nolan. I always want to see Nolan film too. And if you I can't get it. in a pandemic, if you can't get people to go out to go see a what Nolan I, film, you can't get them to go see anything. What I'm saying is, Christopher Nolan film is not the type of film to bring anybody back to the theater. Oh, because it's for like a, like a more sophisticated audience. To a certain degree, yes. Okay. Did you understand Interstellar? Yes. <laughs> you hesitated. Yes. You, you hesitated. I, I didn't quite understand Tenet the first time I watched it. The second time, I thought I understood more. I'm still waiting on my third time. Exactly. To watch you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so that that is maybe that was their marketing strategy. So Wonder strategy. Woman's Wonder Woman's dumbing it down for us, so everybody can go see Wonder Woman. Oh, maybe that was a strategy. Okay, if they don't get it the first time, they'll go see it again. They'll go back and see it again. <laughs> That's all known films. That's my known films freaking. You make so much money. All the all the repeat viewing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but realistically, that was not a tentpole movie that you're really gonna freaking rush okay. to see to get I guess to if, save the I guess if office. we're talking about like a household, like a full family wanting to go see it, my kids don't want to see Tenet. Right. Right. All right. They want to see Wonder Woman. They don't right. want to see Tenet. Right? right. Okay. I get you. All right. Cool. So, so Wonder Woman sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. It sucked at the box office. Is what I mean. It's okay. <laughs> We're gonna do a you don't hate one of <laughs> But the review was almost a you don't hate. It, it kind of was. But anyway, back to you. All right, back to me. Okay, all right, anyway. So here here are the rest of the delays. All right. Okay, so um, No Time to Die, the Bond, the next Bond right, film, okay. is delayed now for uh, October 8th. Never coming out. Never coming out. Okay, so Daniel Craig will be done playing Bond before this film comes out. No, no, there'll be a new Bond. There'll be a new Bond. <laughs> Before, Before this, goes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So no time for theaters. No <laughs> time. New, uh... I like that one. It's a good one. It's a good one. No time for theaters. Okay, so uh, April twentieth, April twenty twenty. Four twenty. Yeah, four twenty. <laughs> then it got moved to eleven twenty. Okay. Then it got moved to April twenty twenty one. So they keep moving it every six. And months. now it's it's uh, October eighth. So they keep moving it about six months every time. The, the way it looks, yeah. yes. Yes, to give it some time, and and the way, and this is what's interesting. You know, those shots only take like two weeks. <laughs> it's like you get the first shot, then you get the second shot two weeks later. I, I understand, <laughs> and that's what I was actually going to talk so, about. Okay, this is this is the, the, when I'm looking at it and what the studios are thinking. It, it's like um, they're thinking about that. They're thinking about the vaccine and 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 when it's coming out, how it's being uh, distributed, and all of that, and they're factoring that to. Like when they feel like people will feel safe enough right. to go back in the theaters. I kind of want to say that the numbers that we saw in the theaters before 
we're not gonna hit those in for a couple of years. I feel like even with the vaccine, because one, people are scared to take the vaccine. So mm -hmm. I think even with the vaccine, when people start to take it, people still are gonna be like iffy about going back. I think we really need to start embracing video on demand. I think they really need to start embracing that. And I know we talked about it before, but I think in a strategy wise for studios, they really need to start figuring that and how they're gonna profit from movies. Okay. Kind of like when Napster and what was the other, uh, LimeWire, I'm old. <laughs> Napster and LimeWire were out there and then the, the music industry had to start figuring out their profits from streaming. As Pandora opposed, and Spotify yeah, yeah, and all that. As opposed to worrying about what they were gonna get in physical sales. So right now the theaters are the physical sales. Music studios still make money from physical sales, but they don't look at it as that like, this is how we're gonna work on, this is how we're gonna make our budget back. But I think this is- Their budget back is coming back from streaming. They need to figure out how to make their budget work with streaming on all of these Netflix and, and Amazon Primes and video on demand straight to early release. They need to figure out how to make their budgets work that way, as opposed to worrying about what they're gonna make in the theaters. Coronavirus, this is what you've done to the world. All right, so here we go. Ghostbusters <laughs> Afterlife has now moved to November 11th. Never coming out. <laughs> I was iffy about this film to begin with. Uh, hopefully Rick Moranis is in it. He ain't. Because he would have <laughs> talked about it. Because he said he's been waiting for, if it's a cameo, if anything. Well, he did get punched out. I, mean, he, I saw that. That's, that's, that's horrible. Punch out Rick Moranis. Don't punch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's, I, I blame Ryan Reynolds. Because he brought him out of retirement to do that commercial. And then he got punched. Oh. And then he got punched. But wasn't he like saving his granddaughter or something? Why are we talking about <laughs> no, this? No, no, no. <laughs> uh, Uncharted 20 is, has moved straight Tom, up. Tom Holland will be 30 by the time this movie comes out. Tom, <laughs> Uncharted will be now released in 2022. <sighs> Once again, Tom Holland will be 30. <laughs> by the time this movie comes out. Old Spider-Man. Old Spider-Man. <laughs> All right. Um... Still waiting to hear for Fast and Furious 9. It's not 10? No, it's 9. It's 9? Yeah. yeah. They ain't no 10 yet? No. Oh. I got graphics for 10 and stuff. Oh, I know. No, because you kept calling it Fast X. <laughs> Fast X is like... What's, what's, I'm and we for, said that in 2015. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, Universal. I'm waiting for, I'm waiting so for my So you name it Fast X. I'm waiting for my chat. It's right here. By the way, so, okay, so Fast 9. Fast 9. Is still... Okay, that's going to come out because they probably already filmed that one, right? They already filmed fucking all of Bond. These, right? they, oh, they're all Bond. They're Bond's all wrapped. Never Bond, Bond's never coming. All right. Tom Hiddleston, bah, new bah. Uh, <laughs> Black Widow. I say they're gonna cave and go they're simultaneous not, release. They don't wanna do it because it's their first feat. Well, it's not because Captain Marvel was. Because people have waited so long for Black Widow as a film and they've been asking for it for so long. They do not wanna be, they're like, and we're, ah, we we're gave gonna, up. Well, we're gonna talk about this in a little bit, but with the success of WandaVision, mm -hmm. original Marvel content, mm -hmm. as much as it has done, right. Why wouldn't you go ahead and release simultaneously also? Uh, because Hell, you just told the studios to do it. I, 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 I'm <laughs> telling you, me, if I ran Disney, it would be done already. We'd be talking about how we already seen it. We were worrying about Black Widow 2. But... Black Widow 2? <laughs> She's dead already. I mean, Afterlife. Black Widow Afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> Black Widow Afterlife. Anyway, so I would have already released this film and been working on the sequel. So um, they're, they're not going to do it because the budget's different. WandaVision didn't cost them as much as Black Widow cost them. I don't know about that. Yeah, no, no. I don't know I about mean, that. They had a big budget, but they didn't have no Black Widow budget. They had to pay Paul Bettany and. Okay, we'll get that no, in no, a minute. No. That, Paul Bettany and, uh, and Elizabeth Olsen, Olsen. They're under contract. They're under that Chris Evans contract that they got this. <laughs> Dude, they ain't getting paid nothing. All right. That's why Chris Evans had to jump off. All right. That's all right. why Tony Stark. That's why Tony. I keep calling him Tony Stark. You can't even. You can't even it's Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. Jr. <laughs> That's why he had to jump off and get fifty million dollars for every appearance. Hey, because I just, <laughs> hey, I just I just saw and, I, and it's probably old news, but ten million dollars for eight minutes of screen time for a homecoming. Exactly, ten million dollars Be because he got screwed on all those <laughs> Iron Man films. So that's why he's getting his money now. Okay, and that's why Chris Evans thinking about coming back now because of the fact that he's like I get that Robert Downey Jr. money. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. All right, so okay, so Black Widow. Okay. Um, Minions, The Rise of Gru. So Minions 2. Release that on video demand. Why are they messing around? Why are they postponing that? Release that on video because demand. Because collectively, the Crudes is still me, making money. <laughs> Despicable, me, Despicable Me franchise has grossed a crap load of Wait, money. Yeah. The Crudes and, and Trolls, they still make money on video demand. Release it on video demand. Why okay. y'all messing around? Why are you messing around? Top Gun Maverick. That's also, we're still waiting on that one. Wait on that one. Wait on that one. Cruella. 
Nobody cares. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> they care when what was her name? Who did it? Who did the who did the 101 Dalmatians live action? Glenn Close. Glenn Close. They didn't care when she did it. That's a good point. Nobody cares. Well, this is Emma Stone though. Nobody cares. All right. Free Guy. I want that movie. You know, I want that movie to come out. I want that movie to come out. But you know what? How much did Ryan Reynolds really cost you? He's Ryan Reynolds now. So I mean, he's Ryan Reynolds. He's not Ben Wilder no more. He's Ryan, he's Ryan Reynolds. But is he getting Tony Stark money? Is he getting Robert Downey Jr. money? <laughs> he's not getting for Deadpool. Is yeah. Hey, for Deadpool, is he getting it for Free Guy? I don't think he's getting it for Free Guy. Okay, he's not getting it for Free Guy. Where is that one? Put well, it on HBO think, Max. Yeah, because I don't think uh, I don't think Robert Downey Jr. got that Tony Stark money for Doolittle. He <laughs> did. <laughs> well, he might have. He might have. Anyway, right. Because I heard that budget was really high on Doolittle. Okay, now this is going to be a callback to our top five because I got a lot of I got a lot of feedback for the most disappointing movies, and one of the topics was The Mandarin. Okay. Okay? Right. And because of what we said about Ben Kingsley and the Mandarin and that whole... About someone that was saying like it was like it was a nice for them to like give you something that you weren't expecting. Right. Well... You'll never see, see it coming. coming. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so this goes back to another movie that's on delay, potentially delay, and that's Chang-Chi, where yeah. the Mandarin actually does come out. Right. Since it's part of the MCU, mm -hmm. and it is canon, mm -hmm. wouldn't that real Mandarin call Ben Kingsley the imposter? <laughs> or would that Mandarin be no, the one they, to they, make they, him? They, they, they uh, uh, held to the king that little short that they did. They addressed that, that the Mandarin got him out of jail and sent for him. So we're going to figure out, like, I figure ben, ben Kingsley is going to appear in the, the Chang chi movie. I assume he's going to appear in that to kind of right that wrong, maybe? No, to at least to just, like, close that loophole that they had or that little little plot hole that they had. Because they addressed it and held the king about the fact that he wasn't and that there was a real Mandarin. So I figured he's going to show up, or at least they're going to address like how he dealt with him. Okay, so right. which goes back to like, I guess maybe it was a good thing, I guess? If that that happened? No, <laughs> that, ha that happened because the reason why we're getting a real Mandarin and Shang-Chi is because the outrage of people exactly. being mad about him. Exactly. Okay. All right. So now let's talk WandaVision. WandaVision, all right. Okay, now, when I didn't know what to expect when I saw this. Um, I did. I did not know what to expect when I saw this. I was looking at it, then I, then we, then, then this, this disappointment top five that Carla picked, by the way. WandaVision wasn't on there. I know, but I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. Because we were talking about Sucker Punch. Okay. We're connecting the dots. So exactly. About how it wasn't real? This is continuity here. About how it wasn't real? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sucker so Punch so top five, to me. Top five was its standalone movie. This is kind of like Avengers, and we're actually talking about it. Okay. All right. All right. When we were talking about Sucker Punch, and we were saying that about everything that's not really happening, and how, right? So now I'm looking at WandaVision in the same, in the same light. Okay. Because none of that's really happening. But we know that ahead of time. I know, but I'm just We knew it going into it. Well, Sucker Punch, we didn't. We, right, we, we, we didn't get we a were Sucker Punch. We, we were hey, that's punch. why they called it that. That's why they called it Sucker Punch. I hate it even more now. Because we, so, we were Sucker Punch. I hate it thinking. even more now. Anyway, all right. <laughs> so it's obvious not it's not legitimately happening. Right. What did you think about the first three episodes so far? Uh, give, give me your give me your so episode I'm a, one go. Uh, by the way, I'm a fan of like uh, vintage TV, old retro TV. Oh, absolutely. So, like, yeah, it's like, you know, I, I grew up watching Nick at Night. I I, I, I watched those shows before Nick at Night was even a cable channel. Yeah. I so, like, I they was, used to replay those stuff all the time. Uh, Honeymooners. Honeymooners. Honeymooners and I, uh, I Love Lucy. Wished, I Love Lucy. Yeah. Stuff like that. It's like, I used to watch because they would replay them all the time because we're old. Yeah. So, they would replay them all the time and I watched those shows. So, when they were doing a format that reminded you of those shows it was kind of like oh cool it was like they're doing the thing like especially like when it got to episode uh, two when they were doing more bewitched mm -hmm. with the magic show and mm -hmm. stuff like that and i was like oh this is cool it definitely reminds me of a bewitched episode or i dream a genie episode mm -hmm. uh and then i would say that um, the first episode reminded me more of dick van dyke which uh, is funny because he's a consultant. Yeah. He was a consultant for that episode. So uh, so the first episode reminded me of Dick Van Dyke. The second episode reminded me of Bewitched or I Dream a Genie. The third episode was... Pretty much. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Or, 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 it, or Partridge. We, we got, we got oh, Partridge, Partridge Family. Family. Partridge Family is a really good one. Uh, so we're getting more into like late 70s, early 80s and stuff like that. So I see where they're going with it. And then they keep kind of like doing the intruding onto her made up reality. So I get what they're doing. And I did listen to the the interviews from Paul Bettany, and he said, "Hey, the first 
half of the season is gonna run a little bit slow. You just kind of have to just kind of wait. A slow build. Yeah, and then when you get to the last few episodes, that's when everything's gonna happen. So I'm just like taking it all in, looking for the little bits that they're giving us and waiting for those last episodes. I'm patient. Maybe not everybody else is as patient as I am because I'm enjoying the retroness of the TV show. And I am too. And and uh, I think that um, the laugh track was a good touch yeah. uh, on some of those. Um, I liked also where in the first episode, when she like drops the stick and tells him just to like, save. Vision, help him. Yeah, it, she like <laughs> drops, it's almost like they're like acting and then she just drops it to save him. Mm -hmm. So there's, I like that. Yeah. Um, and she's done it a couple times where like she almost where she understands that this isn't this is not real. real. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I, I have to break character to deal with whatever the situation Correct. is. Yeah, right. And in the second episode, yeah, big, big uh, bewitched uh, vibes on that. Uh, Especially in the theme song to the, right. the opening. Yeah, the opening. It was, it was, it was, it was all, all bewitched. It was all bewitched. <laughs> it was all bewitched. Right now, to me, Catherine Hahn is just a freaking scene sealer I for love episode her. one and two. Was it was like the, the whole thing with the with the mailman came by and he was like, Shh, sh. <laughs> she, and then he walks by and she goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's just absolutely fantastic. So I absolutely love Catherine Hahn in this. Um, Paul Bettany in in episode two was fantastic. Mm -hmm. I thought his comedic timing was yeah. really good on that. The so, gumming up the works and stuff like that. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's, this is definitely like a, a late 50s, 60s yeah, show. Definitely. So like, I, I, I really, I really like that. It was, it was starting to, you know, uh, I, they went Pleasantville on me where they started showing color yeah. in the black and white. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I, I see where you're going with it. Yeah. And then you're talking about how she broke character in the first, in the first episode. Mm -hmm. She broke character in the second in episode. episode. She broke with character the again in the third one. And then, and then the third one comes. Mm -hmm. And I thought the third one was actually the best one so far. Okay. The third one has been the best one so far. They're, they're now reaching more into like what they're trying to do because their neighbors felt like they were going to reveal to her what's going on, but then held back. Well, because uh, they, I think they know what's going on. Yeah, of course they know what's going on. Yeah. And of course they know what's going on because then everything keeps changing and yet they don't address the fact we've lost characters between episodes. We lost uh, the, the boss and his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the second episode, we had, uh, what's her name, Dottie? Was, right. uh, the, we lost her in the third episode. Mm -hmm. So it's like we're losing characters, but there is a theme of the same characters still continuing on between episodes. So I assume that these particular characters are the ones from outside that are being involved into it. Uh, and then what's her name? Um, Geraldine? No, the one black character. Geraldine. Ger is, that or, is that her name, Geraldine? Is that her name? I can't remember her name right now. And I should remember her name because she becomes, uh, she becomes, she becomes a character. She's, like, char she's <laughs> Captain Marvel. She's a little girl. Yeah. Uh, so Monica Rambo, right? Monica Rambo. That's what I'm trying to think. So like her character um, seems one in episode three. I really enjoyed it. Was like because they made her the sassy black neighbor, and I was like, oh yeah, that was really a thing back then. So <laughs> Walona. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> she was the Walona. She Woods. definitely was her. But anyway, so it's like her character seems to net once they once she took her out of the area, uh, out of her little universe, you get to see it was like her character maybe tied to her, tied to uh, the the friend neighbor person. I can't remember her name. I'm bad with names. Agnes? You, Agnes, thank you. Uh, so they seem to all be tied together because they are the one constant in between each episode. Mm -hmm. So uh, I assume that they're all tied to sword at some point. Correct. Yeah. So. And well, which you know that emblem is pretty much everywhere. It yeah, was even in the, up, on the beekeeper. It was even in the popping up on the helicopter. Uh, but even in the closing credits of, yeah. the, of episode one, where the book is right there, and the book has the, the symbol on the mm -hmm. book. So, yeah, it's definitely swords behind it. Whether right. or not it, it starts uh, getting into Mephisto. Sword, I think swords trying to get her get her out of this thing, where like to kind of break her from it. But they don't want to like say, hey, like this isn't real, and like shatter her. They want to somehow kind of go with it and kind of slowly break her out of it, but we'll okay. see how it plays out. So I'm waiting for Ed Harris to be on the other side because it's very much like the Truman Show. <laughs> it's it very, very much, much like the Truman, the Truman Show. It is very much like the Truman Show. So I'm waiting for Ed Harris or Jim Carrey to come out. All right, so like I said, the acting's been great. They, they've been uh, fantastic and everything. You're, you're starting to see where it's starting to break down and get into the modern world. Right. The ending of part of episode three was just a perfect example of what is really going on. So are we going like, to really get on. like, uh, next episode, are we going to get like Family Matters or are we going to get like Full House? We have to get to 80s. This is 80s now. 
The next one should be 80s, because this was 70s. That's okay, so we're gonna pretty we're, much. Okay, so so this should be 80s. What are we gonna do for the 80s? So it's like I mean, the only sitcoms I watched in the 80s was Good Times. Uh, good times in the Jeffersons and <laughs> yeah, good times. The Jeff See, but and, I was watching uh, a bunch of other stuff too, like Two and, Close for Comfort and and Three's oh, Company and I don't, they're not doing Three's Company. I love Three's Company. They're not doing Three's Company. You're crazy. They might do uh, uh, the Hogan Family. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they messed up when it wasn't Valerie Harper no more. Yeah, they're, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> it was Valerie first. Yeah, then, it was that. It was like yeah, they may do stuff like that. Exactly. But, anyway, uh, I felt like they skipped over the 80s and go right to the 90s. I don't know. I Either think the way. 90s had more iconic sitcoms. We'll talk about it in our top fives. Wait, 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 wait. You think the 90s had more iconic sitcoms than the, than the 80s. 80s? Yes. I think the 70s. You are, I think the who's 70s. Who's the boss? I think the 70s. You're and crazy, And then I think dude. it was the You're 90s. You're freaking insane. I think the 80s had sitcoms, but they weren't as iconic as the 70s and the 90s. Well, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the freaking, <laughs> <laughs> the rest of this whole uh, series. It looks really good. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll see how, how that right. goes. I, I can't wait. All right. So let's stick to the comic world. Different strokes. I forgot about different strokes. Hey, different strokes, baby. Okay, you got me. Different get strokes. get away from that bike shop. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want uh, different strokes? You'll get that reference. Yeah, if you're if you're forty, you'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Garrett and Pretty Facts Live. Come on, Blair. Come on, what's up? All right, yeah. I gave you different strokes. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna stick with the comics okay. because we're gonna talk. I want to talk about this thing that we talked about on uh, on Twitter. We got blasted. Well, not blasted, but like. Okay. All these side conversations started coming from the from the disappointment top five that we did. Thanks, Carla. <laughs> Almost felt like you're saying the top five was a disappointment. The, 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 yeah, <laughs> and it was. It, I mean, I got so much feedback on it from Twitter that it branched off into something else. And one of the biggest things was, and Jeff, that's this is you. You're the one that started this too. And that was, and and our good buddies at Countdown uh, Countdown City. Yeah. All right. So, and that is what you look at modern comic book movies right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. In a sense of realism, okay. you would say that The Dark Knight would probably be the one where they're to like bring saying, more reality. Yeah, where they're trying to say, like, how would this superhero exist in, in the real reality. world? In yeah, reality. Okay. That would be The Dark Knight. Okay. But comic books, period, the okay. way they are now, especially in the Avengers world, mm -hmm. would you credit Blade 98 or X-Men 2000 as the centerpiece of what we know now as the MCU. All right, so in thinking of those two movies, and it's funny that you didn't pick Spider-Man. Spider-Man's another one, you're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, but if we're looking at those two movies, if I had to choose between those two movies for this, the way we look at comic book films today, as much as I don't agree with it, it would have to be X-Men. Even though, <laughs> even though, I feel like Blade was one of the first films that made us look at a comic book movie in a serious light to where we're like, hey, I kind of want to see that. And I'm not just thinking it's like, ah, oh, it's just something stupid that kids will want to watch. That adults kind of like, I'm interested in the character. I'm interested in the storyline. I really want to see what's going to happen. And then it got three, it got three films. It got a full trilogy. Well, two and a half. I mean, <laughs> it's yeah, got three films. Triple H running. It's, 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 it's got three films. So uh, I would say it was that one, but when we look at where comic book films are today with connecting a universe, it's X-Men. Because, I mean, like them or not, it was like Wolverine is a spinoff that connects the universe. Uh, First Class is technically a Magneto spinoff, even though they retitled it to X-Men First Class. It was intended to be a Magneto, uh, Magneto, well, Magneto uh, spinoff. Uh, yeah, an origin story for Magneto. It was meant to be a spinoff for him. So that was, Fox crafting their X-Men universe, and then we got Deadpool, and then we got everything else that extended out from that, where X, not X-Force, uh, but New Mutants, all of those come from the X-Men franchise. So because of that, you have to, you have to say it's that one, based on what we look at comic book movies today. Okay, so my first initial response was- So I was, believe Blade was real. It's, it's my Blade. first initial response was Blade. Yeah, I mean, you would want to because that's when we first started taking seriously. That's we, the we'd first already time. seen Punisher. We'd already seen Dolph Lundgren Punisher. We'd already seen Dolph Lundgren Punisher. <laughs> we'd already seen <laughs> Dolph Lundgren He-Man. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren did a lot of damn movies. <laughs> Sounds good. We did uh, Roger Corman's Fantastic Four. We'd already seen those, and we didn't take any of those serious. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that and that's that's why I go with Blade. Right. Because it is the first Marvel film that had balls. Right. One, 
it was rated R. Right. Two, it did not shy away from the content, the, the source of the content as far as the, the way, graphic rated nature. R. They didn't show me no boobs. What, yeah. what the hell happened I mean, there? you got Tracy Lord's cleave, but whatever. I mean, it, that's, <laughs> it shows more on the internet. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So you get you, you get a lot more truth when it comes to the content, much like what The Crow did. Um, of course, that was, yeah, that was four years before that. So. In so the same Blade vein is the as the end crow, of that crow era. Yes, and okay. and and, and uh, it, it it because it the crow is an independent comic. And the crow wasn't by most people realize that it was a comic, a comic book film. Right. Yeah. And so because it was an independent. Yeah. I mean, hell, Turtles is an independent. If you were to think about it, Turtles is a comic book film. Yeah, <laughs> <it's a comic laughs> film. exactly. And but Blade was the first that actually brought the Marvel tag. Mm -hmm. Regardless of night, uh, uh, New Line releasing it, it was it had a, nar a Marvel tag, and it it showed uh, the the guts to to actually show Blade, right. and not hide the way they did with Spawn, which okay. was a year earlier. Right. And seeing them, and that's probably why they chose that because the, they chose that direction because Blade is not a PG-13 film. Right. Spawn is not a PG-13 film, not, no, but it wrong. was released that way. Right. So that was one of the biggest gripes about that, right? Mm -hmm. So why am I going to make the same mistake with Blade? No, let's do it right. And they did it right. Yes. And they did it even better in Blade 2. So I agree. So that's why I say when it comes to, to really showcasing Marvel, I would say Blade is the one. Now. The argument was, or the topic was, what shaped the, the, the modern comic. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. It is X-Men. Mm -hmm. One, you take unknowns. Mm -hmm. They took unknowns and made them freaking icons. Yes. You know, especially Hugh Jackman. So, you, you and then you add some, some veteran actors with Ian McKellen and, and, and uh, Patrick Stewart. So, you have that substance there, too, as far as the acting credentials. Okay. Think about it. You know, the MCU is probably the only comic book franchise that has multiple, like, right. and I'm talking multiple Oscar right. nominees or Oscar winners. So I kind of want to get on side of your Blade thing. So I, it had recently come to my attention that if there had been, if Wesley had behaved himself, if there had been a Blade 4, they were going to introduce uh, Morbius. There was, post, there was a cut, there was a, uh, a post credit scene in Blade that they cut where you were supposed to see a guy in like a hooded jacket and stuff like that standing on a rooftop, which was supposed to have been Morbius. Where they were gonna have, because Morbius and Blade kind of back and forth in the comic books. So that was their introduction of their kind of like multiple character shared universe. So if given more time, Blade could have been where we view X-Men at. Right. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna make it a tie. <laughs> Depends on how old you are. I really, <laughs> no, because you, you made a great point. Freaking Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy was really freaking, that was good. Yeah. And to the point where they're using multiverses to bring those back. So now that Mahershala Ali is Blade, could we see Wesley in a multiverse? Will, will, will he talk about the fact that, uh, uh, what was his name? It's like there was a guy named Cottonmouth that used to run this area of town. <laughs> I, heard, I heard he was a bad mother. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm just talking about Cotton Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so X-Men wins that, but I think Blade has a strong, strong case for... Uh, I think so. I think being the, 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 the... I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll put it like this. I honestly don't think that they would have been completely okay with Deadpool without the success of Blade. As far as the first rated R comic like that, holding the Marvel tag. I think they wouldn't have been okay with uh, Deadpool being rated R if they hadn't have said like, "Hey, you're gonna make it on." Uh, oh wait, the Wolverine, the, the Origins mess up or what? No, it's the fact that redemption they, of he, that. he chose a, a smaller budget. They were gonna give him a larger budget, but they were like, "It's got to be PG-13." And it was like, "Well, if I take a smaller budget, can I be rated R?" And they were like, "Yeah, I guess we'll make it back." And then he was like, "All right, cool, I'll take a smaller budget." And uh, uh, hey, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what the MCU does with that one. Let's though. see what that. All right, so here we go. It's time for our favorite freaking time. Oh, our favorite time. Let's and play. I have no idea what these let's topics are. Let's throw. <laughs> let's throw Terrence on the hot seat. It's time for rapid fire, Brandon Lee style. All right, 
Chris Evans could potentially be back as Captain America. Do you want to see him in another movie or would you like a series on the Infinity Stones taking him back? Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll make it quick. Uh, I don't need to see the Infinity Stones things because it's got too many plot holes that they're not going to fix with one appearance of him. Two. No, like I WandaVision, it's a series. No, I don't want to see that. All right, cool. <laughs> I'd rather see him in a movie, and I'd rather see him in another Captain America movie. Uh, also, put, too, yeah. I don't want to see him playing... Who's he playing in the What If? I have no idea. No, no, no. He's playing... A, he's doing a voiceover for somebody in What If. Uh, no, not What If. Uh, Toy Story. Oh, Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. I, I don't want to see him in that. So I want to see him back in the MCU, but I don't want to see a TV show, and I don't want to see him as Buzz Lightyear. So you want to see him in a movie? I want to see him in a movie. Okay, cool. I want Captain America 4. All right, speaking of Disney, <laughs> Monsters, Inc. sequel series, Monsters at Work, would you rather have that as a movie or a series? I want to have it as a movie because I feel like it's going to be too drawn out to be a TV series. Monsters, Inc. works in like one quick story as they tell between Sully and uh, Mike. 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 Mike Larry. Not Mike. What's that? <laughs> I was trying to say the last name and not mess it up. You made me think of Mike Lowry though. I want to see it as a movie and not as a TV show. Didn't they already do a Monsters, Inc. TV show? Uh, I feel like they did, no, they, they, did, they did a lot of shorts. They did not do short. a show. But it, doesn't, um, it doesn't work as a TV show. Six, ep a six episodes already filmed, I think. Ah. Four, five, four to six episodes they're already filmed. They're going to make it. It's, it's going to be like watered down. I kind of like that. It. It's like saying, like, you want Toy Story as a TV show? No. <laughs> All right. Ray, Ray Fisher, is, is uh, he's actually going to be promoting Zack Snyder's Justice League despite WB dispute. Do you need Ray Fisher to promote your movie? I have my feelings about Ray Fisher, yeah. but you know what? I don't. Hey, I, it, I feel, it, I'm with you on that. Anybody that helps promote this for HBO Max, they should be happy about it. It's like, hey, go out and do some press. Go to like, they should be happy. Please go. We're not paying you for it. Go out and do some some publicity for it. But us. because of the because of the ongoing disputes that he's got with Warner Brothers, but and he's how talking he about it in a positive light. No, how he was treated by Joss. Oh, Mason. that he might continue to talk about that. Yeah. Or would you want Ray Fisher to promote your stuff right now? I, mean, I would not. He ain't doing nothing else but being, but being uh, a jerk and not interview, letting that, us interview him. That too, but it's like he's not being anybody else but uh, cyborg. Thank you. <laughs> cyborg. <laughs> he's not being anybody else. It's not like he's doing other films. So it's like he's only talking about Justice League. Hey, all all press is good press. All right, and we just talked about this. AMC raises one billion dollars to be removed from bankruptcy. Is that good for the theater industry? Uh, yes or no? They, I don't need AMC to do, go bankrupt. I need them to still be like above, like they're one of the top movie theaters. So it's like if AMC goes under, then you're like, oh, the movie industry itself is in trouble. So That's true. they need to exist. Didn't they? Um, I thought that there was a like some type of stimulus for the movie theaters uh, that was coming out to help We're keep them afloat. <laughs> All right, whenever that comes out, we we'll keep the movie theaters alive. Indiana Jones 5 may take place in the Whatever 60s. Whatever this is, is a no. Should it take place at all? No, it shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't take place at all. And if it takes place in the 60s, Chris Pratt. <laughs> My new Indiana Jones. <sighs> yes. All right. Who's Did you not watch Jurassic World? Did you not watch? <laughs> he is basically Indiana Jones in Jurassic World. <laughs> all right. Last one. We're going to free ball this one. Whoa. Who's <laughs> Who's your Royal, one, your Royal Rumble winner? Oh, uh, God, I haven't been keeping up with it. If I had to pick, because I just heard that, uh, who said they were coming back? Was Edge was saying that he was going to be in a Royal Rumble? Mm -hmm. I'm picking Edge. You're going to pick Edge? Because you think Edge is the Royal Rumble winner? He wouldn't have winner. announced that he was coming back. Okay. All right. He's like, I'm coming back and I'm going to be in a Royal Rumble. I pick Edge. All right, cool. All right, real quick. Was it NBC? Universal, okay, is going to put is is acquired WWE. Mm -hmm. They're gonna put them on the. Oh yeah, and I heard they got kicked off of ESPN because of that. They're gonna be on the Peacock yeah. Network now. Mm -hmm. Is that a good move or a bad move? Well, in this pandemic, and I probably feel like they did this because subscription numbers were going down. Uh, people were cutting back as far as what they were spending per month. So for them, they don't have to keep worrying about like showing us like, and you get all these free pay-per-views and, and, and the WWE no, Network is only $9.99 a month. They don't have to keep doing that. They could just do it. the office. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> Here's a coffee shoe. Yeah, it's like they could just do their thing. Oh, bad one, they're, sorry. <laughs> they're just going to take, hey, maybe not the coffee they're shoe. just going to get paid whatever fee they get for being on the streaming app. Um, but also too, it brings more eyes to them. 
everybody that had the WWE Network were already wrestling fans. With the Peacock, you get the casual fans. So it's like, we're all on Peacock, and I was like, oh, what's this WWE? I heard, I remember back in the day, I used to watch Hulk Hogan. I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna look, and I was like, oh, what's going on in wrestling now? And then they may get new fans from that. Okay. Maybe. So I get that, maybe they're, because I heard that their ratings are really down right now. Oh, they're so, horrible. They're so awful. they need the new fans. But I did hear it here in a side note, or at least today I saw it on YouTube, where it said that uh, because of the Peacock deal, ESPN, psh, not even mention them no more. Wow. They're like, they've been kicked off of ESPN. So the little uh, the little wrestling show that they had, oh, done. Done? Done. Wow. Well, well, they're owned by ABC, so <laughs> yeah, by so Disney. They was like, we're not talking about a competitor, so. Yeah. Damn. All right, Terrence, take us home. I guess there'll be a Peacock show for that. Uh, w, no, it's WWE Cock. <laughs> <laughs> That just sounds dirty all the way around. It's Weecock. It's Weecock. Oh, God, that sounds even worse. Uh, but anyway, hey, back to on uh, Goods Podcast. If you guys stuck around and decided to watch another Goods Podcast, we thank you. Uh, and I'm glad that you're probably a subscriber and you got the notification because there's no other way that you know we posted a podcast today because <laughs> unless you were already a subscriber. But for the people that actually kind of stumbled across and found our channel and found this particular video, make sure you subscribe and click the notification button so that way you're aware of all the other videos and this one that we do on the channel. Uh, if you want to help see this show get better because it can get a lot better, make sure you go to our Teespring where we're selling shirts like this one that maybe is good to view or not on screen. Uh, but we have this one and many other designs for us. And we also have a Patreon where you can just straight just give us money. Hey, we appreciate that too. Go ahead and do that. Every dollar you give actually does help us get better. And for those that have actually done what Terrence has said and uh, broke our, uh, we broke 1,200 subscribers. 1,200 subscribers, we're good. We're 1,200 subscribers. Not bad for when we started with 10. So yeah. That's not bad. We're still all trying of, to get better after five all, years. All of our friends, all 10 of them. <laughs> all 10 of them, that's right. So we appreciate the, the subs. Thank you very much. Keep subscribing. Keep looking out for, for new content. We always want to put uh, a lot more stuff out there for you. Uh, for Aspen and Art, where the hell they're at, and Carl on the couch doing absolutely nothing, I'm Manny. I'm Terrence. And that was a good... Oh, real quick, uh, if you're still here, if you're still here, because we do these end, end of the video little blooper things. <laughs> if you're still here, look down, look down. There's a link here for Patreon. If you guys like the show, please give us money. Give us money. We'll take a penny. We'll take a nickel. We'll take a dime. We'll take a dollar. We have some stuff on there that we're giving away on Patreon. If you do contribute, because trust me, we need help. We need help. We want to buy new equipment, and we need an editor. Somebody who doesn't have to stay up in the middle of the night. Or well, they don't have to stay up in the middle of the night, but I won't have to do it. So please, down. Patreon.com forward slash the goods. It's in the link. Please do it. 